Deuteronomy chapter 18, please. Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, according to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it is, it is important to be aware of what Satan's doing in our world so that we don't fall prey into his evil system. Now this is the ultimate goal that Satan wants at the end of the tribulation with everything. School politics, government, science, religion, and Christianity. This is his ultimate goal. It is to worship Satan, and that is witchcraft. The ultimate goal is the occult at the end. That's why you will see high-ranking things within the conspiracy theory realm concerning elites, or anything that has to do with Catholic Masons, etc., that you will see something occult associated with that. Adolf Hitler wanted to get pretty close to that one, so he was uh, infatuated with certain books that dealt with theosophical works. So he tried to get into that kind of stuff. Men of great power, people of great power, wanted to get into that. Within the conspiracy th theory realm concerning Jesuits, according to Chick comic books, Ignatius Loyola and his followers, they like to do certain things where they levitate on the ground. And then if you listen to the Catholic Mass, they actually mention Lucifer's name within there. So the thing is, is that this is the ultimate goal of Satan within every system today. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. And notice what the Word of God reads right here concerning about witchcraft at verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord." So we're going to look at several cases why witchcraft infiltrates everything, and I mean everything today. You might say, well, that's quite a bold statement. Why is that? Because let's look at the definition of witchcraft it itself. The definition of witchcraft, according to Webster's 1828 dictionary, it says this, the practices of witches, sorcery, enchantments, intercourse with the, dev with the devil. So how about that? It includes enchantments here. And he claims right here that it is an intercourse with the devil. That's a strong word right there, intercourse with yeah. the devil. How about that? So then concerning about what Eve did with Satan, if there was something that may have been some sort of intercourse right there, maybe it had to do with witchcraft. Because the Bible says the serpent beguiled Eve. And the Bible says beware of charmers at Deuteronomy chapter 18. And they often use snakes for charming things, right? With music. Yeah. So anyways, that's just food for thought, okay? That's just a, I'm not saying it is, but that's just food for thought, all right? It might be a theory, all right? If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. That's it. But look at the definition of enchantments now. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Here we go. So witchcraft has to do with enchantments, correct? Okay. Then what is enchantment? Enchantment is this. The act of producing certain wonderful effects by the invocation or aid of demons or the agency of certain supposed spirits. The use of magic arts, spells or charms, incantation. So the idea it is the idea is this, it's a wonderful, now this is not to say that it's a positive phrase when we say wonderful. Wonderful in English, it also means something where it takes your awe. So it's something that takes your awe and that it's something, some kind of miracle thing that's like, oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. So that's the idea of wonderful. These are the wonderful acts of demons. 
So the idea is, is the idea is, is that if a wonderful, there are only two things concerning wonderful acts, because wonderful acts has to do with something supernatural. It's either God or it's the devil. So if God is not in it, then who is? It's Satan, right? So Satan will have to be attributed to any kind of wonderful act if it is not of God. You'll notice right here that Webster's 1828 Dictionary also says it's of certain spirits. It does not have to be where a person says, oh, I communicated with the devil. No, it can be any other spirit out there. So a Hindu might say, no, I'm not a witch. I'm not a occultist. I'm not worshiping Satan. Ah, but you're communicating with a different spirit that is not of God. And God attributes that as enchantment, and that is automatically witchcraft in his eyes. So that is important to understand. So now let's talk about this thing concerning witchcraft, how it infiltrated our world all over today. The first thing let's cover right here is concerning the children. The children. You might say, how so, Pastor? The greatest evidence is Harry Potter books. Harry Potter books. And then we also got Pokemon. We also have, yes, Pokemon Go. We also have, am I hitting your idol right here? We also have right here concerning Disney. So you'll notice that within some innocent themes, there is a different wonderful act involved or a creature involved that is not of God. Pokemon literally means pocket monster, you got to understand. So if that monster is not of God, then what else is it? So you got to realize this is that how it infiltrated the children. Children, uh, they have a fantastical mind. So then Disney themes, they put all this stuff about magic here and even wizards and witches when they're bold enough to do so. So uh, we, Harry Potter is the closest you can ever get to witchcraft, but they put it as children's theme. And then J.K. Rowling, I'm not sure if this is true, but I heard the total income all over is a billion. So th this woman is filthy rich. Why? Because Satan wants to put his blessing upon something where he can get the children for himself. Who does Satan want to attack? Innocence. That's why Satan loved to attack Adam and Eve, because they were in the children mindset. They were at the stage of innocence. That's why Satan, he loves it when concerning these elites, there are some weird things going on with pedophile rings and then some things concerning human sacrifices by Satanists. I kid you not, it's still going on during Halloween. They do things where there are uh, child kidnappings or women kidnappings, etc. Strange stuff, right? Strange stuff. But um, I, I would just, uh, I would be bold enough to stretch abortion clinics right here. Because there are cases, if you work at abortion clinics, people go over there to buy certain parts where they can keep it as a memento or eat it. Yeah. All right, but anyways, anyways, okay. Anyways, so children. A second thing right here that we notice how Satan can infiltrate, has infiltrated, is concerning religion. Religion. Oh, but it's Christianity. Christianity is the largest world's religion. No, not the Christianity of the Bible. Amen. It's Satan's Christianity. So let's, let's, so let's talk about the prime largest Christian religion, right? Catholicism right here. Catholicism, Catholicism right here. Look at all the idols inside the churches and all the symbols decorated all over the churches right there. There you go. There's witchcraft all over over there. There's witchcraft all over over there because they worship idols. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible shows in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 that devils are associated with idols. That's what? Witchcraft. That's witchcraft. And there are some cases. I don't have documented proof right now, but there are some cases according to Chick Comics, where Jesuits, they get involved with some kind of weird occultic practices where they light up candles and do levitation and stuff like that. By the way, look at their lighting of candles and their incantations in Latin and all that. How is that different from the occult right there? Oh, yeah. Where they do lighting of candles? Mm -hmm. Where they have to say some kind of incantation? Isn't this witchcraft where you try to get a spirit out of the spiritual realm to enter an object? When you do Catholic mass, yeah. mm -hmm. witchcraft, man. Yeah. 
So we poke fun at it that it's fake and it's not real. And then the Catholics say, oh, no, we have it right here in this glass container where this bread actually contains human flesh right there. Well, you're not helping your case right there. You just proved that's witchcraft. Then. <laughs> you're not helping your case right here. Look at masonry. And look how very closely related they are with Mormons right here. Look at all the symbols. If you think Catholicism is bad, look at these two. They're just, look, they're just worse, if not the worst. They got, they got witchcraft, occultic symbols all over their buildings. If you don't believe me, I encourage you to go to their church building, find 10 symbols you look throughout the room, and then research yourself what those symbols represent. That's it, okay? Witchcraft. Joseph Smith, he did some weird peeping stuff at the hat that occultic people do. And what did the Bible said about, in the book of Isaiah, if I recall from memory, about peeping through a certain stone? Mm. Now, you pray and ponder about that for a while. Look at that. That's crazy. You also see that, unfortunately, that we see right here Judaism, God's own chosen people. This is no new news ever since the Old Testament. They've been tolerating witchcraft. And then with Babylonian religion mixed up with that, you will see certain symbols within there and then certain uh, objects that they would dress up in, how it would represent certain things that the occultic world would practice as well. See that? There's a lot of relationships right here, especially their star, and that's infamously known as the Star of Remphan. So you see a lot of relationships right here, but I encourage you, here's another thing, Let's, let's cover right here, ooh, this, we don't want to talk about this one. But look at Hinduism right here, and Islam right here, and look at all the other Eastern religions out there. What do they communicate? They communicate with spirits that is not of Jesus Christ. And what is that according to the definition? Witchcraft. That's why they'll have what? That's why Islam, they worship a moon god idol. Look at the history. It is a moon god idol right there. Witchcraft, idolatry, because idolatry is connected to that. Hinduism, worship uh, of many spirits and gods. Yoga, weird stuff where you can walk on fire and lay down on these kind of boards that have spikes on them. Look at all that weird stuff. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, dealing with spirits that are not of God, and that's automatically defined as witchcraft. Another thing right here is Christian churches. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, here's a great example concerning about signs and wonders, the charismatics right here. Signs and wonders. Ooh, I saw a vision. Well, did you read about the occult practices concerning visions? Those, they connect alpha brain patterns where they can see things and communicate with the spirit realm. Visions are known by occultists as witchcraft. How about that? So, but if you don't believe me, watch my video. Uh, uh, I think the title of the YouTube video is saw Jesus in a vision, yeah. it's Satan. Just, I quote documents right there, and I quote it from occultic sources. Here's another thing right here. The Bible says that the signs and wonders, that they are only for the Jews, Amen. and that the signs and wonders, the, there are verses that shows that they have been faded away and that they are gone, and that we walk by faith, not by sight. That's a Christianity. Our faith is in the Word of God. Not by sight, what we see. But see, everyone wants to see. Everything wants to experience. So if those powers are not from God today in the New Testament church, who are they from? Other spirits, Satan. See, witchcraft. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. What is the Antichrist world religion? What is his system? Through signs and wonders, he will deceive. Look at the book of Mark chapter 13. False Christ will arise. They will profess that, that they are using Jesus Christ. And that will be used at the tribulation, Mark 13. Don't get mad at me. See, that charismatic, because you, your faith was on experience, you're very emotional, and that's why it comes out. And I, I'm very scared for you now. I'm very scared for you. All right, here's another thing right here concerning Christian, 
Christian churches, modern versions. No. Yeah, modern versions, man. Witchcraft all over, man. Witchcraft all over. I don't believe you, pastor. No, did you read the, did you look at some modern versions that have the Apocrypha in it? In the Apocrypha, do you know what they have over there? They have over there witchcraft. Book of Tobit, where it talks about, uh, where it talks about some person taking out the entrails of a fish because some angel told him to do so and he's communicating with them. What is that, man? What is that? About praying to dead saints, communicating with spirits? That's witchcraft. Necromancy right there. Look at that. What about in your modern version where you look at the book of Proverbs in your New King James Bible? Look at your New King James Bible. Don't believe me. Just type down the word divination in your New King James Bible, word search it, and it shows you in the book of Proverbs that it is a positive thing to use divination. Wow. Okay, you want me to show you something more? Okay, so we know that throughout all of this, that witchcraft, they use a lot of marks, right, or symbols. They're really big on marks and symbols. And that was demonstrated throughout all of this before, right? But in modern versions, look at your new King James Version. Look at the front page. It's got this symbol right up front over here. And guess what? In the Winchester Mystery House, I'm not sure if I'm drawing this accurately, but go to the Winchester Mystery House over here. That woman was demon possessed. She was conjuring up, she was talking about spirits getting into a cult, and these symbols were all over her wall. If you don't believe me, vi go visit the Winchester Mansion. And that's in front of your New King James Version Bible, huh? Oh, you want something more than that? Look at all, nearly all, nearly all modern versions. When you look at Revelation chapter 13, the King James Bible says a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Why did the King James Bible says that? Because technology, they're putting something inserting inside your right hand and even in your forehead. Yeah, believe it or not, that they're doing that. Singapore Times, 1980, I had the documented source. They were, China, they were, or Singapore, they were doing something where they put some stuff on the forehead. And look at that. Technology inside, a mark in. But modern versions, nearly all of them say on, on, and on. Mm -hmm. Now, what do witchcraft, what, what is witchcraft big on? Marks. Don't you think this is something that Satan could use, probably? Now you think, now go ahead, go home and think and pray about that, okay? Maybe I'm just stretching things, right? I'm exaggerating, I'm crazy. Uh, Christian churches, modern versions, it's infiltrating all over. Another thing is concerning, wow, well, well, I spent a long time in here, okay, I gotta wrap this up. Another thing right here is concerning science. Science. Science and education. You might say, how is that? Look at the book of Daniel chapter 1. Look at these, Daniel chapter 1 through 2. Look at these guys who are into witchcraft, dealing with uh, sorcery and magic. The Bible calls them science. Science. How about that? But science and education, there is witchcraft all over. You might say, how so? Because now it is growing inside the scientific realm where they're opening up themselves to something outside of science. Science doesn't have all the answers. They are willing to open themselves to a supernatural realm out there. That is becoming a phenomenon that's growing now. It's not completely atheist. Atheists, they still make the domination, but you gotta realize this, there's a lot of people that are blending in now with evolution and mingling up with their religion. Yeah. You gotta realize that. For example, my professor, she taught evolution, but guess what her other class was? You wanna believe it, witchcraft and the occult. Wow. How about that? How about that? What a weird professor, right? But that, this is not new. <laughs> this is not new, okay? Not only that, look at technology, how advanced they are. Did you study about certain technology where CERN, for example, they're mingling witchcraft or, you know, something spiritual, Hindu stuff mingled in with that? Certain speakers in CERN talks where they're talking about as if that we're going to make a breakthrough in science and we're dealing with something and they put quote-unquote supernatural or gods or devils, quote-unquote. 
Why? Because in their scientific mindset, they can't say it scientifically accurately that there is a devil, that there is a God. But when they use these quotations, they know there's something that's within our, uh, outside of the physical realm of science, that there's something else out there. There's something else out there. And scientists believe that we can make that breakthrough. We can make that breakthrough. So they discover a lot of things. Rose, another example is Rose, how he makes his technology, very scary stuff. He mentions about stuff where he can reach at a, yeah, he mentions about a certain place where he can reach about a very cold temperature close to absolute zero, and then they see some kind of stuff out there that's outside of normal expectations of science, but a different realm of science. Yeah, a different realm of science, huh? How about that? So I believe this. I believe that science, because why? Look throughout the Bible about science. It's always mingled with witchcraft. Look at that. They mingle, intermingle science with witchcraft. Sorcery, for example, they get into chemistry. They get into chemistry, but they use chemistry to mingle it up with witchcraft right here. Why is that, Pastor? Why mingle science with something spiritual? Because Satan wants to change the natural effect of this natural environment. Science is the power that can naturally process that. So science is a gateway to it. So see, God, uh, these wicked gods out there, which the Bible calls fallen angels, which are known as devils, you can see that witchcraft is all over. And in the end, it will bring that new world order at the end. The last thing I want to cover is government. Government. Look at Washington, D.C., for example. Just take one visit. You'll see marks all over, right? You'll see marks all over. Symbols all over. And they're Masonic and occultic even. Look at the flags of all the countries. Look at the flags of all the countries. Not every single flag is occultic, but look at the symbols within uh, your nation's flag and tell me if that will not represent something that has to do with something with Eastern religion, something that has to do with some kind of uh, religious philosophy that is spiritism. And don't tell me that you won't find a cultic symbol in there either. So I dare you to do that. Look at the Look at these different nations. Korea's flag, for example, with the yin and yang. Another example is the nation of Israel with their star. Look at the Muslim nations with their symbol. Look at that. See, all nations have the marks and the symbol of something occultic. Witchcraft. And remember, what's the definition of witchcraft right here? Now, I would like to give this one interesting... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to... I, I can't turn to this verse for time's sake. But I want to say this one last thing. If you look at Revelation chapter 13, this is very interesting. Now, this is just a theory, okay? This is just a theory. Witches and sorcerers and wizards, why do they need symbols and marks before they give an incantation or spell? Because there's a power with a mark and a symbol. And by using words with that, it can conjure up the spiritual realm. What if... The marks that is found within our nation's flags, our nation's government buildings, and in the modern Bibles, and uh, within everything that has infiltrated within our world, within science, they're using this technology with the mark on it, CERN with their symbols. What if all the Antichrist has to do at Revelation 13, the Bible says, out of the Antichrist's mouth spoke great blasphemies. And then if you keep reading down there, it mentions he makes all receive his mark. What if all he has to do is the marks are all set up and then all the Antichrist has to do is cast a spell. Boom. That's a theory.